Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Corona Post Show. What a massive Monday that we had today. 24 heats completed to set up the quarterfinals for the men. An all-time day at Super Tubos and a gorgeous sunset. Remember, we got here on dark. Started first heat at 7 o'clock in the morning, and now it's just past 6.30 in the evening local time. The fans are incredible. They hung in there through the hold that we have through that low tide, and we set up... One of the most high performance days we've had in a very long time. Thanks for being with us on the Corona Post Show. Joe Chappelle, Kaipo Guerrero, and Jesse Mendez. You know, when we get a lot of work done, Kaipo, that feels great for the event, but also in just prime conditions. The, the best we've had for the round of 32 this year. Yeah, uh, champagne hour this this afternoon. Uh, the filling in tide, the, uh, the wind going offshore. I mean, this is what European dreams are made out of. Day three was outstanding. It was amazing. I was actually kind of jealous that I didn't get to surf today because the waves <laughs> right before dark was firing. It was like as glassy as it gets. Tide was getting lower. We had spinning barrels the whole beach. It was beautiful. And also the best wild card performance that we've had all season. Still going. Welcome back to the Dream Tour. Juan Duro getting the score on the buzzer to get to the quarterfinals, AJ. Nothing like a buzzer beater to end the day, Joey. Juan, talk me through that final wave, how you knew what you needed to get and how you just sort of saw each section to make sure you got that score. Yeah, well, it was crazy because you had two good scores, priority for 10 minutes and the waves were starting to be perfect and start to be on and I saw some barrel everywhere. But you had priority and I couldn't be at the right place. Then he got one and I think he fell and I had priority. So I was like, okay, relax. You have like five minutes, just wait one good wave and it's gonna come for sure. It start to be pumping now. So he came, so thanks, thanks so much, and uh, stuck I got the score. You're the wild card on finals day, but here at Panish, you've had a lot of success going very deep a few years ago. How have you leaned into that experience to push your way to finals day? Yeah, I love this place. I love Portugal. I came here since I'm uh, young, like eight years old. So I love here, good food, good waves. Looks like La Gravia home, so I feel right at home. <laughs> well, do you want to say anything to those who are not here, who are watching and rooting for you at home? Ben, merci tout le monde, Maud, papi, mami, ma famille, mes potes. Allez, on continue encore un peu, un peu jusqu'au bout. <laughs> Back to you. Oh, so great to see Joan Duro in this kind of form. And you can kind of feel like he doesn't have that weight that he used to have of requalification, the intensity of, of traveling around the world, surfing a million events a year. It's, he's still looking just like he did when he was on the top 34 full time, but now with nothing to lose and all to gain. Yeah, and, and dangerous, right? He's been, a, he's been a finalist out here. He's been a runner-up before. Uh, the one thing... That, that I'm missing with, with Joan Duru is the celebration when he used to punch himself in the head <laughs> after, a good, after a good wave. Remember that, Jesse? Yeah, man, he does that. He's such a dramatic surfer. Like, he wears his heart in the sleeve. And if it's going good, it's amazing. If it's going good, it, it's not going good. It's even better for us to watch because, like, he can be very pissed. Yeah, I'm he, glad that he saved his face there yeah. that time because <laughs> that barrel was worthy of one of those classic Joan Duru celebrations. Getting the barrel, moving on to the quarterfinals. Jake Marshall, Jesse, put it together. Even though you had the John John slamming the lip, early lead to John John Florence, but Jake Marshall was able to come back and take this one. Yeah, and it was John and pretty informed because John was surfing very free, just amazing drive through those turns, accelerating. See right there, those laybacks are so powerful. But he was just a little bit smarter, kept um, getting those waves a little bit steeper, um, aggressive, surfed very fluidly, and just, yeah. Straight to the point. Yeah, straight to the point. It, get, it milked this one all the way through. Channeling some good ocean side there. And then this is the one that turned it. This was the 6.77 on the forehand. Couple of carves for Jake Marshall. It took out the rankings leader onto the quarterfinals That's for Marshall. That's right, Kaipo. Yeah, I talked to Ross Williams. He said, I thought the result was fair. Jake had an extra turn. He's saying, yeah, John has a ton of power, so you could see him winning a lot just on those individual majors. But he said uh, it's hard not to see, you know, Jake moving on. He had that extra maneuver and, and definitely earned it. Chris Gallagher said, uh, Jake deserved it. He works hard. He's incredibly humble, and he's one of my best friends. It was kind of rad hearing from the coaches and uh, both seeing Jake with his composure to pull it off again. Now 2-1 in John John uh, against John John in one-on-one -on -one heats. Not many people can say they've 
got a winning record over a world champ like John. Yeah, still pretty close when we look at the numbers as well. So, um, but Jake Marshall building momentum into this uh, into this finals day. Congratulations, big up Cincinnatus. So now we're gonna really be focusing on where this yellow jersey could lie. You know, you look at the live rankings, which is really fun. Ethan Ewing now moves all the way up to number three in the world as he's still in contention. We lost Baron Mamiya and Jack Robinson. So we'll see what happens, Jesse, moving forward. Hey, I think this is great for us because when those guys in front ended up losing, there's more people on the run. It makes it more exciting. Every heat, there's something big on the line. Speaking of Ethan Ewing, wow, did he look great today against Italo Ferrer. Kaipo made a gamble, surfed a part of the beach that no one had surfed on before, and it really paid off. Yeah, look at the guy he had to challenge, a two-time champ over here, Italo Ferrer. Ferrer's been electric in his way up until this round of 16. Looked like the board stuck to his feet. Ferrer, bravo. Like I said, electric, fast surfing butt. Ethan Ewing, that rail control, just beautiful, Jesse. Yeah, it was so impressive. Just the way he can cut the water is just second to none, really. Like, I'm um, literally speaking that because it's just beautiful rail surfing. And he identified the best wave out there. And that one made the difference as well because Italo was on form, surfing very well. Started off pretty good with two solid scores, but... But that eight-point ride, it was really the turning point of the heat. Well, pretty crazy that Ethan has the ability to stay in his lane. You know, he got Italo just flying free above the lip, and he just stays patient, catches just half as many waves, and he was able to turn it even with time running out. Beautiful rail work ended up being the big statement today. Yeah, isn't that his method of operation, just being selective? Every time he gets to his feet, he's going to make it count. Italo Ferrer, the exact opposite, just staying busy, but today... Ethan Ewing one up them, and, and I can't wait to see what Ewing's going to bring to finals day. Big one there as he moves up to number three and is able to get past Italo, a guy who's won this event multiple times, the guy who we were kind of pegging as the Brazilian to maybe move into the top ten. Now he's going to have to focus on Bell's Beach, the place that gave him his first victory. Ewing now moving into the quarterfinals as we have some interesting stories really lining up where we look at the Californians kind of returning to a finals day. Jake Marshall taking on Crosby Colapinto. The big brother Griff is at the bottom part of the draw. So there's a lot of that SC crew hoping for a Colapinto final on finals day. Could be a fairy tale final for the surf town of San Clemente. Brothers in the final. Wouldn't that be a great one, Jesse? Yeah, that would be great. Obviously... It's what it's like the dream. Imagine them in the final, um, both brothers. I had my brother growing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but look at Gabriel Medina, his form. He's that one Brazilian that we thought was going to take over the rankings as soon as he suits up at Pipeline. Little delayed, but the way he served today it looks like he's truly unstoppable. He does have Leo Firavanti though on the draw. Yeah, but Medina in on the live rankings has already moved up seven places so this is a medina that is starting to get into gear and stop number three after a lackluster hawaii performance so um yeah he's gonna be one to watch out for gabe medina a dangerous one obviously ramsey on a roll as well really looking forward to finals day for the women as they worked out some great heats at the jetty down the beach they'll be back at super tubos as we look to see gabriella bryan take on tyler wright Tati, a past champ, will have Betty Lou Sakura Johnson, both being coached by Ross Williams. Caroline Marks, she joined us earlier today, Jesse, and she looks really fresh and ready to go for Lakey Peterson. And Lulu, great effort here to make it to the quarters as she'll take on Joanne DeFay. Jesse, what's popping out to you is the, the biggest heat to watch in the quarterfinals. I mean, I'm very biased, and I mentioned that yesterday, but I like you too. Um, not just obviously because Tachi's in it, but um, Tachi and Betty Lou are very good friends, so. I like those drama because they live it. They, they're very good friends. They're very good at leaving the, everything outside of the water. And once they get in the water, it gets fire. And I kind of feel like Tati has been kind of surfing her way into rhythm. Kind of fell a few times early and has really switched on. And then you got the other side of Sakura, Sakura who's been very informed and finding so much confidence every time she competes. Is it too early to, to look at Betty Lou Sakura Johnson as a potential world champ? Gosh. Is it early in the season? I mean, but what, we saw what happened at Pipe. Right. We saw what happened at Sunset. We've seen what we see what's happening over here. 
I don't know if I'm too early on this call. No, but I like it. I like where you're going with it. And it's kind of like how we're watching Ewing for yellow with, you know, John out, with Jack and Barron out. We're, we're definitely watching Betty Lou with Picklum out, you know, uh, and Caitlin Simmers. You know, this is, this is a huge opportunity for Betty Lou, and she's been surfing better than she ever has on tour. And the surfing has been there always. Obviously, she's been developing, but just the confidence seems it's in a, it's in a better mind this year. So she looks very strong. Exciting moment today for Gabriel Medina, three-time world champ. He is going to have a big feature on this Corona Post show, earning the best wave of the day, 9.33, and one of the cleanest full rotations to cover some ground and had more combinations to follow. This is when he had Jack Robinson and really ran away with it, Kaipo. Yeah, this was so one-sided, but this 9.33, look at the amplitude, the rotation, and just sticking the landing, absolute stomping it on top of the lip. That was a in-form Gabe Medina. Kingy, his coach, gave him the nickname The Lion, but I think we got room for a couple of lions in the pride. Joe, you're, you're the lion as well, and, and, and I like the pack coming together, but uh, yeah, the lion had his claws out today. Yeah, it's a bit, kind of better when your coach gives you the nickname. I try to give it to myself. That doesn't really work <laughs> that way, but yeah, Medina earning that 9-3-3, looking really comfortable, finding his flow and rhythm. It's, it's fun to see Medina in this kind of form where he just starts heating up round by round, giving us a little bit more, and hopefully he's got something for us on finals day. I think it's going to be dropping a little bit tomorrow, but let's take a look at the Surfline forecast, really focusing on tomorrow and the day after for our finals day. The weather takes a turn in the remainder of the waiting period, so we're very close to crowning champs. Jess, what are you seeing here in the forecast? Yeah, I'm seeing the next few days the, the most potential, and obviously tomorrow um, a little bit smaller. The next day, swell in size is very similar, but it does turn a little bit more west, which is that favors our beach of super tubes. So, as we see it right here, three to four feet tomorrow faces. The next day, three to five, both days offshore in the morning. So, we might have two half days, might have one full day. We'll see. Yeah, we got 14 heats to go, right? 14 heats to crown champions for the men and the women. So, there's a couple ways you can slice that up. It can be a full day. About seven, eight, seven and a half hours of competition, or we can do it in two half days, Joe. We've got options, yeah. which is great. I was talking to Miguel Fortes as well, who's that local knowledge guy that we always talk to. He said, tomorrow looks great. If it is a little too small, he, he doesn't mind moving it a day away. Just uh, the wind's not as favorable, but it'll have a little bit more size. But he said, two great options. And obviously, if we wake up tomorrow and it looks fun, we could be crowning our champions very close to that. And now we get to the top five of the day on the Corona Post Show. And this guy just getting in the mix on that last wave that we saw ridden in the matchup, getting nice and barreled. Congratulations, Jean Duru, getting the five spots and getting the win in the quarterfinals. Look at this for the wild card, the French surfer. It's a buzzer beater. It looked like Rio Waida was on his way to his second Back-to-back -back finals day here in Portugal, but Joan Deroux had other ideas. Turned the heat right there. Also taking a number four spot was the air show that we saw from Italo in the round of 32, Jesse. He almost looked unbeatable today. He was in such a good form, just throwing huge airs as you see right there. Foot coming unstuck in the front and just being able to regroup. But unfortunately, he went down because he was looking very good, but just great form for him overall. Amazing rotation right there. Very functional air and very just amazing to see him in the air. It's like the board control is impressive and just trying to chop off just to finish it up. Best total he's had this season, 8-6-7, 8-5, but Itzalo went down in the round to follow. Then number three, Crosby and Ramsey advancing onto the quarterfinals. Not bad for rookie Crosby Cola Pinto. He's on to his first finals day in just three starts in the championship tour. Ramsey Buchayim, same thing. The Rockin' Moroccan. We're going to see him in the quarterfinals. And this sharp backhand was put to its paces out here. So congratulations both to Ramsey Buchayim, Crosby Cola Pinto.
already making finals day. How cool is that? Crosby's first quarter, Ramsey, same scenario for him. And he focused on his backhand in this heat, Jesse, while Yago was just focusing on the left. That was a big difference. I actually had a chat with Yago after, and he looked at me first thing he said, it took me too long to go down there. I was like, yes, I hate to break it to you, but you know, those guys recognize it very quickly. And also number two on the daily top five, Medina show again, heat score, combined heat score of a 17.16. Ginormous numbers for Gabe Medina. Do it on the forehand, do it on the backhand, do it in the air. Got that 9.33. Was throwing away numbers that surfers would just beg to have in their heats. Medina is back. I love the combinations of airs that he's throwing down. That full rotation was so smooth, so lofty, and had enough in him to lay down a couple more turns to follow and a nice cool claim there. Medina putting together some great waves on his back end as well, Jesse. Yeah, he's getting into the form that everything that he seems to do, it's working out. Um, and it's it wasn't before for the first few events of the year. But just amazing form for him and yeah, good work. Congratulations, Leo Ferravanti, winning the Corona Post Show. Buzzer beater barrel against his longtime friend, Kanoa Garashi. Fell straight into this barrel, just seconds left on the clock, turned the heat. Looked like Kanoa was going to make it 4-0 in their head-to-head -head matchups, but Leo, his good friend, childhood friend, says, nah, I'm in finals day. Mom loved it. Fiance loved it. The balcony loves it. Leo loved it. Oh, he absolutely did. I love Leo's reactions when he gets a buzzer beater. You can tell how much fire and passion is flowing through his veins. Uh, he's almost shaking when he comes in. You know, those are the moments that you dream about when you qualify for the tour to have seconds ticking down, your best rival in the water. He pulls in under the hood and gets the nine to win the heat. I mean, that's what it's all about, Jesse. I mean, those moments are, are just very hard to make it happen. Like, they only happen a few times in your whole career. So he took advantage of that, mostly against, again, against someone like Kanoa. And uh, the drop that late, that underneath, that was impressive from him. And he's going to remember that one for a while. And kind of like your call earlier, Kaipo, about Betty Lou going to a world title potentially this year. I'm seeing that in Leo making the WSL Final Five. I'm feeling his rhythm and his confidence is there to potentially be there in September at Lower Trestles. Well, we've had a massive day. We better get some rest because it could be finals day tomorrow. Local time, we're going to make a call at 6.45 in the morning for a potential 7 o'clock start. Winds look good. Still some swell around. So stay tuned on WorldSurfLeague.com for all the athlete updates and all the great highlights. And we'll see you bright and early for a finals day call. Take care. <laughs>
This copyrighted event broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted.